Hi everyone, so I'm sure by now you've all heard the horrible news that Taco Bell is discontinuing their Mexican pizza. And so I felt like I needed to do a mukbang. I also asked you guys a while ago what I should do for my next video. And you guys gave me a lot of great suggestions, but a bunch of people said you like my mukbangs or mukbangs. Sorry, I know I still don't know how to say it, which is so weird to me because I don't know why you like them. I guess I love watching them, not my own. I like watching other people do them. So I kind of understand, but also I don't. Anyway, hi. We're gonna have a little chit chat. My husband is throwing forks in the kitchen. Lovey, stop throwing silverware. What? It's nap time. This is valuable time. He just said I was wasting his nap time. I'm not wasting his it's nap little, time. Little Flynn's nap time. This is when you can get stuff done. I am getting stuff done. This isn't getting stuff done. <laughs> this is definitely getting stuff done. Do you want me? I got this so is much. What room. I'm having. He's having water with green poison in it. It's like a greens drink. It's like a like a multivitamin, but like also with like your vegetables kind of mm, healthy same. drink. Mm -hmm. I have <laughs> <laughs> a crunchy taco. Another crunchy taco. I didn't know if you'd want one because I'm a nice person. I love the classic nachos with cheese sauce. I also got this like, it's like a double decker, but with cheese and then more crunchies inside. I don't know what that's called. A chalupa and a bean and cheese burrito and cinnamon twists and a Mexican pizza. I actually got two Mexican pizzas because I didn't know if you'd want one because they're going out of business with their Mexican pizzas. So now's your chance to eat one. I'm so sad. They're Should also come with two rolls of toilet paper. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna have a lot of poop. I thought we could talk about how horrible this year is. I feel like this is like the tipping point for me. 2020 just keeps getting worse. And now they're getting rid of the, Mex the Mexican pizza. The Mexican pizza, for those of you who don't know, don't have Taco Bell or don't eat this trash. It's like a crispy, delicious, like flaky, crispy tostada tor thingy with refried beans and meat and then another one of the crispy thingies on top. And then on top of that, they put like sauce and cheese and tomatoes and all the same stuff and it's so good. I don't like it. <gasps> you don't like it? I don't like the sauce that it's on. Really? And I, I don't see a place for diced tomatoes in society. <gasps> really? Yeah, I can't think of any food that is improved by diced tomatoes. I can think of many that are ruined. Did you say ruined? Did you say ruined? No, it's ruined. I'm usually not a fan of diced tomatoes either, but I'm just trying to enjoy this because this is gonna go away forever. By the way, we're doing health week this week. It's going well. We did health week last week and I continued it. You yeah, I stopped. I had to, because I had to say goodbye to the Mexican pizza. I understand, if, it's, if they're not gonna make it anymore, then I guess it doesn't exist because you certainly can't make it at home. Mm -mm. Well, I don't know how to make this at home. This kind of like flaky crust, like this like, get out of here, it's so good. I don't think I have enough chemicals in my kitchen to make Taco Bell food. I could make like healthy versions or like, not even healthy versions, I could make versions of Taco Bell food, but I don't have all the chemicals they have, you know? They use like bathroom chemicals? Yeah. That's why it's so good. I think so. I mean, they must use a ton of chemicals on this stuff, don't you think? There's no way this yeah, is food. Like, like this isn't of, food. Like, MSG or whatever, like, yeah. kind of, like brain tricky. But it's so good. Like, that's not cheese. No, certainly. Not. That is not food. Like, this isn't edible. When we um did haters back off, they're pretty healthy, at least in Vancouver. I don't know about all of Canada, but in Vancouver, they're really um good about their food. They take good care of their food. They're humane with their food. And people are pretty healthy, I feel. And we had weird food on set. Like, Miranda ate a lot of cheese balls and Hostess. <coughs> Ew, I just like coughed into <laughs> my cheese. Anyway, they had to cross the border for our gross food. They're like, you can't get that here. That's one chemical away from being plastic. Cheese balls. Cheese balls. Because mm -hmm. they're like, they're like literally flammable and yeah, it's one, it was like one chemical component away from gasoline. Mm -hmm. It was switchable. It wouldn't even sell it in the country. Yeah. But guys, 2020, how fun has it been? We've been quarantined for six months. I thought it was gonna be a couple weeks. First, I, w I went on tour, I, was, I went to Grand Rapids, Michigan for what I guess was my final show. I had no idea it was gonna be. <laughs> Eric was like, don't go. Like there's this COVID thing, like don't go. And I was like, meh. I got home and he was like, you have to cancel your shows in Chicago next week, you have to. And I was like, ah, you're crazy. Yeah, you didn't believe me, you thought mm -mm. I was just freak. I thought you were insane. I was like, There's, this isn't a real thing. It's not gonna be a thing. And then I had to cancel my shows. And then I was like, okay, so for like the next couple of weeks, we're gonna be quarantined. Let's get enough food to last a couple of weeks. Remember that? Like we like tried to stock up on food for like two or three weeks. So crazy. 
I don't know what that means, but it's like bread every day. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I bought like cans of beans. Mm -hmm. But they were like, just every store was out of cans of beans. Mm-hmm. It was so crazy. crazy. Wow, we're still in it. I know. So that all sucked. And then obviously politics have been terrifying. Please vote. All the riots and the protests, which I support. 100% um, support all the protests for Black Lives Matter. Like, but it's been crazy. Look at all the, you're right, love, all these tomatoes, not necessary. Like you were gonna eat a single one of those tomatoes. No, get out of here. You, got, you brushed them all off. No place in society. Mm, to the loop up. It's just been such a crazy year. And then there's this huge earthquake. It was terrifying. Sugar has to the core. We're due for another one. They're saying there's gonna be another huge earthquake in California soon. And yesterday, we we're surrounded in fire. Like where we live, it was like fires popping up all around our house, like really close to our house. And I was like, and this weekend is supposed to be 111 degrees. The record, like the hottest LA County has ever been. Like, are you kidding me? Like, can we get a break? This is so nuts. Do you want some chalupa? I mean, in my heart I do, but in my brain I do. Mm -hmm. But in my stomach I do, but I don't. But in your butt you don't. No, it's not even that. It's just like, it'll taste good as I chew it. And then I'll be ashamed, mm -hmm. hate myself, and then I'll feel sick. Like I will feel sick from it. You're gonna feel sick. No, I'm not. I've been eating this since birth, baby. But yeah, the fires scare me a lot. Like I feel like every year they get worse and worse and worse. Remember Australia was on fire this year. Yeah, I mean when we went camping, we could see the mountains next to us because of smoke from fires that weren't even close to us. This year's the best. Jojo Siva called me late last night, 1.30 in the morning. She FaceTimed me because I had tweeted and posted a TikTok about wanting to cut bangs. And she was like, don't do it. She like literally FaceTimed just to yell at me, do not cut bangs. And we started talking and I was like, I'm so bored. I can't stand it anymore. She was like, you need to do something creative. Use my stage in my backyard, put on a performance, do a big show, like start planning a big something like so that you can be doing something. I was like, okay. And now I'm eating Taco Bell. So this is me doing something. I need to do something because I really can't stand it anymore. I know some people are all just like over it and are just going out and doing stuff, but we're really not. Like we don't go anywhere. We don't do anything. We only see family if we've all been quarantined for two weeks. We don't go get anything. We have everything delivered. Yeah, so that's crazy. Anyway, Lovey, can I tell them your big secret? The secret you revealed to me the other night. I'm not allowed to tell you a secret. So the other night, Eric and I were having a date and we were just like having conversation and we discovered so many new things about each other. And one thing he discovered about me is that I lived in basically the worst situation ever in college. I had, I think seven roommates in a house. I'm sure I've talked about this online somewhere. Literally the worst roommate experience. The girls I lived with, I didn't know. I only knew my roommate, which was my friend Heather, who I'm still friends with. And she's great, like I love being her roommate, but we lived in this like house condo with a bunch of other girls. I didn't know any of them. They, it was very obvious they did not like me. <laughs> they didn't like Heather because we were like the new ones in the house, I guess, I don't know. But we had like weekly meetings. We would sit and they would like want to have like prayer and talk about God and, and which is fine and whatever. Like they were just like the most nitpicky roommates in the whole world. <laughs> so, so like they would, I had no money at the time. So I was eating like, you know, chop ramen, pasta, like whatever was on sale. Like there'd be times where I'd eat like chips for lunch or dinner, you know, like whatever I could get. We all had our own specific like cupboard in the kitchen, like with our name on it. Like we had name tags. And these girls would still go in and open up my cupboard and eat my food without asking. They didn't even talk to me. Like they would just go in and eat my food. And so at one of our prayer meetings, I brought it up and I was just like, hey, um, I don't have a lot of money. And so, you know, if you want to eat my food, I'm happy to share. Like you could just ask me and I'm like happy to share with you. But if you just take it, like sometimes that's like what I was gonna eat for dinner and then I don't have anything. And they were so mad at me <laughs> for saying they couldn't eat my food. I've never eaten any of their food. And they said that, Sometimes I left my bedroom light on when I would leave the house and that made the electricity bill go up. And so basically since we all split electricity down the middle and I would leave my bedroom light on sometimes, that was the equivalent to them eating all my food. <laughs> what? Anyway, I was just telling Eric all these weird stories. He's like, this sounds horrible. I never knew you lived in a house with like seven girls. Anyway, I don't know why I just told you that story, but Eric and I were talking about it the other night and he, we were talking about things we didn't know about each other. Another story I told him was I went to South Korea with a choir 
in college and we were singing at a church, this huge mega church. I grew up in churches that were like non-denominational, like Calvary Chapel type, like laid back, chill kind of churches is what I grew up going to. And I hadn't experienced much else as a kid. When I went to college, I went to this church in, in South Korea. It seemed like a normal church service. I couldn't understand anything, obviously, because I didn't speak the language. But at the end of the church service, everyone in the congregation, and it was a huge church, massive. Everyone in the congregation started speaking in tongues and like screaming and crying and falling and like, and I had never seen anything like that before. And so I didn't know that that was like their version of like worship and they were speaking to God. Like I didn't know that that's what they were doing. I didn't understand. No one had told me that that was what they were gonna do and I was not educated and I didn't understand that like that was part of their worship. So the only thing I could equate it to was like the scary stories I had been told about demon possession as a kid. I was like, you know, 19, 20 and I was so scared because I was ignorant and I didn't know what was going on. But I remember we were, on the stage like on risers and we all had just sung and like church just happened and then like the whole room just filled with like screams and like people speaking in tongues and all this stuff and i feel like now i could watch it and like and be there and learn to like appreciate someone else's culture and like understand that like that's what they were they were worshiping and that's like was their version of it but at the time i was so ignorant i didn't understand that that's what they were doing so i thought i was like are they all possessed like what's like i didn't know what was, i the only thing i could equate it to was like possession and because they were like screaming their heads were rolling back they were falling and crying and like so i just didn't know what was going on and i just remember being so scared i was like crying and praying and like um just stupid and like didn't understand at all but like it was so funny like just sitting and talking with eric about stuff from like college and like learning about each other and like remembering these stories from college that like i haven't thought about in so many years sprinkle some cinnamon on moosey my experience at that school that i went to a religious college was not good. I'm not saying anything about that school in particular. I'm not saying anything about religion. I'm just saying my personal experience. For me personally, it was a negative one. And I learned so much and I got educated so much on the world and religion and religions in general in college and after college. And um, I personally encountered a lot of mean, judgy, rude people um, in my personal experience at that school. In, on our trips and whatnot, so. I have a lot of crazy stories from that time of my life. Dude, these cinnamon twists are so good. There was a time where Alice Ripley, who's a Broadway performer, she was in a musical called Next to Normal, which I've, funny enough, been listening to a lot lately. I love that musical. I think it's so good. And when I saw it, I actually saw it with Ariana Grande and Aaron Simon Gross, one of her best friends, and Joan Grande. They took me to go see it when it came out, and they had all seen it and they loved it. And so they wanted me to see it, but didn't give me any context. And so I had no idea what was gonna happen, and I don't wanna spoil it for anybody, whoever sees it or listens to it, but there's a twist that I didn't know was coming and I wasn't expecting it at all. And so I really love that show, like blew me away. But anyway, Alice Ripley plays the mom in the original cast, and it's a very difficult, um, overwhelming, intense role to play, the role that she played. And I just have a feeling maybe she's the type of actress who gives all of herself to, I mean, she clearly does, she's incredible, but maybe it like transfers over to the rest of her life, even when she's not on stage. Cause at the time she would make these YouTube videos, this is like 10 years ago, that were so weird. And one of them that I remember so well, like kind of went viral was um, she would go, twist, twist, the cinnamon twist, 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 a cinnamon twist. And she like got all close to the camera, it was so weird. No context, like that's all she said and like just turns off. You put a little more mascara on and all your wishes come true. And anyway, I always think of that video when I eat cinnamon toast for Taco Bell because it was the weirdest video and I was like obsessed with her weird videos that she would make when she was in Next to Normal. Um, I wonder what she's up to now. She's an icon. That show's really good. I love Next to Normal. It's incredible. I hope theater survives. 2020. I don't know how it's gonna survive. Broadway's so expensive to keep up. All these theater people and like the crews and all the people who work in theater, like completely out of a job, like me. 
actors, yeah. Well, I mean, at least Hollywood's opening up a little. Theater is just like, just, you can't perform in a theater. Like, at least actors is gonna start to open up a little bit, but for theaters, like, you cannot perform live, like, for a big audience. You just can't. I was on Broadway last year, and the people that I know from doing Broadway, for th theater kids, like, by the way, you can get my merch theater kid if you want. <laughs> I'm sure this is theater kid. This is another piece of my merch, but I dyed it purple. Anyway, your dream is to like be on Broadway. Like that is the ultimate goal if you're a theater kid. And these people are on Broadway. Like this is the ultimate dream, like top of the top. Some of my friends who were on Broadway, have been on Broadway multiple times, have to file for unemployment now. Like they've been on unemployment because what else can they do? So it's like you finally get the dream, the biggest dream of your life. And like you think you should be able to like survive being a Broadway performer and all of them are struggling. Like all of these Broadway performers, the crews, everyone, the musicians, like they're all struggling so much because how can they pay bills if you can't perform in front of an audience and that's your only source of income. Like they're all just completely screwed. And I know a lot of America is screwed. I'm not just saying that only Broadway performers are screwed. So much of America has just been so screwed this year in 2020. But like you wouldn't think that like Broadway actors, cause you just think of those as like the elite, in my mind, they're like the elite, like they'll be fine, but like they're not like it's so nuts i just hope broadway survives after this like i don't know how it will i hope like because if ticket prices go up they're gonna have to to like fix all the money they've lost but no one's gonna be able to afford it because no one has a job right now so no one's gonna be able to go to theaters plus no one's gonna want to go to theaters because no one's gonna want to sit next to each other in a closed space like a thousand people in a, in a room with no windows open like no one's gonna want to do that so even for me like i'm so grateful that i have youtube like to keep me afloat during all of this i'm like so grateful i feel like the luckiest girl in the world that i have this but like performing was my life and like touring was my main source of income and like my favorite part of my job like i love touring and that's obviously gone now even when covid ends like and this pandemic ends i don't know how i'm gonna even tour like you know my team and i are like setting updates for like 2021 but it's like are those just gonna get canceled are people even gonna buy tickets i don't know if my tour like last night i couldn't sleep because i was just thinking like oh is my touring life over like am i done touring forever now for real because like I don't know if people will ever buy tickets to my shows again for many reasons one I don't know if they'll want to um, if they're like all over me by that point or by now but also like are people gonna want to sit in a theater and watch a show like sitting next to strangers like I don't think they will so I was like laying in bed and I was like so sad I was just thinking about all the places I've toured to and how lucky I've been like to be able to tour the world and perform for thousands of people for almost 10 years like I feel so lucky but I'm like oh is it over like I'm, I was so sad last night like just thinking about how that time of my life might just be done. Like I might already be at a point in my life where I will tell Flynn as he gets older, oh yeah, I used to tour all the time. But like my thought always after I had Flynn and I started touring again with Flynn, I was like, this is so cool. Like Flynn's gonna grow up touring the world with his mom. That's so cool that as a family we can tour together and I can show him the world while, while I tour and like he will grow up knowing like mommy performs on stage, just like my niece and nephews have. Like they've toured the world with me and like they know what I do and perform on stage but like Flynn might never know me as that person like he might never see me perform on stage and understand like he's seen it but he was so little that he won't remember it so I'm like oh is that part over like am I gonna have to explain to him like I used to do this isn't that sad like I could cry I, know, I, can tell. I, guess will. I, promise. I literally am gonna cry <laughs> it's sad it, like kept me up last night I was really sad But 2020 sucks. <laughs> They're getting rid of the Mexican pizza. <laughs> and I know that's like nothing small potatoes compared to like everyone else and like what everyone else is going through. Like this is nothing. Like I'm such a baby and I should shut up because I'm like so lucky to have what I have. Like I know that, but it's just a weird thought. Like, oh my God, is that part of my life over? That thing that was like my favorite part of my life for like 10 years, is it, is that done? Like. It's a really scary thought. I hope not. I'm not saying that it is. Like, I really hope not. Like I said, we're planning shows for 2021 already and hoping that it happens. But we might have to cancel those based on no one buying tickets or based on the fact that, you know, it's still not safe. My camera turned off. But I just hope that whenever it is safe enough to travel again, that people will want to come see me and want to get tickets. But I don't know if that will happen. You never know. So for now, I'll eat Taco Bell in my house and complain about the Mexican pizza being canceled. Yeah, what a crazy year it's been. It's been so crazy. I never expected this year to be so weird and so crazy. Anyway, it's been a crazy year. Hang in there. there the other thing too is like, it's important to look at the, the bright side of things. And like for us, the bright side is like Eric and Flynn. If I did not have them, I don't know how I would survive this quarantine. Like 
Flynn keeps us smiling and laughing all day, every day. He is so funny. He's so curious and grateful and makes me appreciate things that I never would have thought of before. Like now I get excited when I see construction trucks. I get excited when I see a bug. I get excited when like I see a puddle. Like anything that like Flynn might think is cool, I like get excited about and it's stuff that like I never even thought about before. Like I used to think construction trucks were annoying and like loud and wake me up and they still do. And I just, but I never, I never, I never thought like what? Were you seeing puddles? Pu not recently, but like I'm saying, I used to. Like when we'd see like water. Like I make puddles. Like we'll make buckets of water for him to splash in. Like little yeah. things that used to be like you don't even think about. Like now when we see construction trucks, it's like the best part of the day. Like it's like so exciting. But if it's just me by myself, like you'll say a bulldozer <laughs> <laughs> or like a squirrel hole or a bird. Like if we're in the backyard and the bird flies in the backyard, I never would have noticed a bird before. And I'm like, bird, Flynn, look, it's a bird. And he's like, bird, bird. Little things now, like, bugs, like just digging bugs, bugs, digging in the dirt, like little things I never would have noticed or appreciated before. I appreciate now and notice because of him. We're getting so much quality time with him. We're gonna be so bonded, the three of us, like as a family, because of this time. So there are definitely like positives in this horrendous year. I feel like Eric and I are closer than we've ever been. We were talking about that the other night, like how, I feel like a lot of couples are, it's really testing couples this time because you're just at home with your loved one and we're just like, oh, we're we're very solid. Like it's it's the opposite. It's like, oh, we couldn't have gotten through this without the other. Like, you my man, you my boo. Thanks for my coffee. Anyway, thanks for watching. This was quite the mukbang. <laughs> I talked about so many things. Uh, we talked about a lot. We started with talking about just Taco Bell and Mexican pizza and ended up talking about religion and I ended up crying, which isn't that surprising. But yeah, I love you guys. Thanks for watching and thanks for wanting me to do a video where I just get to eat gross food because that sounds like a great day. So thank you. And I hope you're all doing well and staying safe and um, I will see you next time. Don't forget I'm vlo still vlogging every single day on my vlog channel. So if you want to see my daily life, go subscribe there and make sure to follow me on TikTok because I'm way too old for that app, but you can't make me leave. All right, bye.